Hello Pilgrim friends and family. Welcome to another story time in the summer with Mrs. Conniff. Today I'm going to read three short stories aimed at our younger friends. And I brought my little knitted octopus along to listen today with his other friends behind me, Dog Man and uh, Elephant Piggy, um, because one of the stories is about an octopus. Just has an octopus in the title, but there are other animals in it. So we're going to start with that one. I'm going to put him back up here, sit on top of Elephant's head and join his friends. The story is called Good Thing You're Not an Octopus. Story is by Julie Marks and the pictures are by Maggie Smith. This book was published by Harper Collins in 2001. 2001. So if it were a person, this book would be 19. Good thing you're not an octopus. That's our title page. You don't like to get dressed in the morning? It's a good thing you're not an octopus. If you were an octopus, you would have eight legs to put in your pants. You don't like to put on your shoes. It's a good thing you're not a caterpillar. If you were a caterpillar, you would have 16 feet to put shoes on. You don't like to ride in your car seat? It's a good thing you're not a kangaroo. If you were a baby kangaroo, you'd have to ride in your mother's pouch. You don't like to eat your lunch? It's a good thing you're not a bird. If you were a bird, you would have to eat worms for lunch. You don't like to take a nap? It's a good thing you're not a bear. If you were a bear, you would have to nap all winter long. How many of you know what the word for that is? I bet you do. Can I hear you say it? Mm, I bet you're right. You don't like to take a bath? It's a good thing you're not a tiger. If you were a baby tiger, your mother would have to lick you clean. Lick, lick. You don't like to brush your teeth? It's a good thing you're not a shark. If you were a shark, you could have 200 teeth to brush. So the next time you need to get dressed, go for a ride, eat your lunch, take a nap, take a bath or brush your teeth. Remember, it's a good thing you're you. you. There are lots of wonderful extra things to look at in that book if you go if you go back and have a look. I'm just going to read about the author and the illustrator quickly. Julie Marks, who was born and raised in Los Angeles, has worked as a photographer for the Los Angeles Times and the Associated Press. A former world traveller, she now finds her inspiration much closer to her home in New York City, where she lives with her husband, Eric Shine, and their sons, Charlie and Nicholas. 
Good Thing You're Not an Octopus is a first book for children. Now, remember, this book was written 2001, so I expect that information has changed and her boys will be grown-ups and she's probably written a few more books. Maggie Smith thinks it's a good thing she's not an octopus. It'll be too hard to draw underwater. She is the author and illustrator of There's a Witch Under the Stairs, Counting Our Way to Maine, Dear Daisy, Get Well Soon, and other titles. Miss Smith lives in New York City. See, I forgot to show you this page, which is called the end papers, the front of the book. Even though it's at the front of the book, these are called the front end papers, and these are called the back end papers, and they have octopi on them. Okay, so that was book number one. I'm going to read book number two now. So if you need to take a break or go to the bathroom or get a drink of water, off you go. You can take a pause here. This book is called It's Okay to Make Mistakes. Uh-oh! Written and illustrated by Todd Parr. I'm going to take the dust jacket off to read this one because it's easier for me. But before we do that, I'm going to show you a picture of Todd Parr on the back with his dogs. And I'll tell you about Todd Parr. Todd Parr is the author of more than 30 books for children, including the New York Times bestselling The I Love You Book, The Earth Book and The Thankful Book. He lives in Berkeley, California. Here is our title page. It's okay to make mistakes. Uh-oh. Maybe you can say the uh-ohs with me as we go through the book. And this book is written in 2014, so that makes it six years old, and it was published by Little Brown and Company. So if it were a person, it would be six. Here's a dedication page where one of the fish is going in the opposite direction and saying, uh-oh. It's okay if you spill your milk. You can always clean it up. It's okay to try a different direction. Uh-oh. You might discover something new. It's okay to not know the answer. Uh-oh. Asking questions helps you learn. It's okay to get upset. Uh-oh, your friends are there to cheer you up. It's okay to fall down. Uh-oh, you can always get back up. It's okay to wear two different socks. Uh-oh, others may try it too. It's okay to forget your umbrella. Uh oh. You might meet someone new. It's okay to change your mind. Uh oh. Everyone is ready at a different time. It's okay to get mixed up. Uh oh, you can always ask for help. It's okay if you are clumsy. Uh oh, you might invent a new move. It's okay to get dirty. A bubble bath is lots of fun. Uh oh. It's okay to be shy. Uh oh. Being quiet can make you a good listener. Hoot, hoot. It's okay to colour outside the lines. Uh-oh, it's good to follow your own path.
everyone has uh-oh moments. That's how you learn. Uh-oh. It's okay to make mistakes sometimes. Everyone does, even grown-ups. That's how we learn. The end. Love, Todd. See on the cover, the boy has something on his head that doesn't necessarily belong there. And the dog has socks on his ears, I think. Okay, so that was book number two. Again, if you want to pause before we start number three. This one is very old. This one, I read this with my son, who's now 28. It's one of Richard Scarry's book, Richard, uh, Richard Scarry books. It's called Watch Your Step, Mr. Rabbit. This one was 1991. So that makes it 29 years old, which is about a little bit um, older than when I first read it to my son. It's by Random House, published in 1991, and it is called Watch Your Step, Mr. Rabbit. Here's Mr. Rabbit buying a newspaper. So if this were a modern story, you might think what Mr. Rabbit might be distracted by instead of a newspaper, although people still buy newspapers to read. Down the road where I live, there is a newspaper stand that is still open. Some people like to read their news in the paper. But when I was reading this book now, I'm thinking that Mr. Rabbit might be distracted by something else in his hand. Can you tell me what you think that is? Mm -hmm, I bet you know. Here comes Mr. Rabbit. Can you predict what's going to happen? Is he looking at his feet? Nope. He is looking at his newspaper. Now he is looking at his feet. His feet are stuck in the street. Can we push him out? No. Can we pull him out? No. Can we blow him out? No. Can we squirt him out? No, we cannot. His feet are good and stuck. Aha. We can scoop him out. Mr. Rabbit is not stuck now. There goes Mr. Rabbit. He is looking at his newspaper again. Oh no. Watch your step, Mr. Rabbit. So did Mr. Rabbit learn his lesson about paying attention when you're walking? You shouldn't be looking at something when you're walking. So what was that thing that if, if this story was being written today that he might be looking at and not his newspaper? Shall I show you what I think it was? It would be? It would be a phone. Yes, indeed. It would be his phone. So I hope you enjoyed those three little stories. They were for our younger folks, um, some of my favourites, and I will see you soon. Have a happy summer day. Bye-bye.